and then I'll come back to this. Okay. Okay. Roll action, ma'am. Hi, welcome to This Week in Property. I'm Jayashree Kurup. I'm editor MBTV. I have with me Prabhakar Sinha. He's the real estate editor of the Times of India. And our guests today are Sushil Mota. He's president of West Bengal. And he's also the chairman of the Merlin Group. There's uh, Dr. Penkatesh Panchpagesan, associate professor in IM Bangalore, and CA uh, Sunil Garg, who's our tax expert today. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, the, the issue here is all about uh, finance for the real estate sector. The issue is, should the real estate sector cut prices? Uh, Deepak Parekh uh, of uh, HDFC told the uh, developers, don't hold uh, stock. Even if you have to cut prices, cut it and uh, uh, liquidate stock. Uh, Piyush Goel, our minister, uh, told them in so many words, sell, sell your stock, reduce your prices, sell your stock. At one point of time, even Mr. Niranjan Hiranandani said, I did see, I do see prices dropping by about 10 to 15 percent. Now, the developers have been staunchly saying that it is impossible to cut prices because they are already under stress. A, a, an industry that has faced five years of uh, slowdown is today uh, contending with uh, another uh, global economic shock, which is the COVID-19. So let me first start with Mr. Sushil Mota. Uh, Mr. Mota, uh, let's, let's talk about prices. Do you think that uh, the real estate sector has the flexibility to drop prices at all? Well, good evening to everybody. Uh, first of all, we have to understand in this country, there are so many hundreds of micro market you know, if you if one says that the prices has to come down or if somebody says that the prices are high, it is absolutely not relevant unless you say in, in context of a particular locality or in context of a comment by Mr. Parikh that prices has to come down or a comment by uh, Mr. Goel that the prices are high. These are all populist comments, you see. Everybody in this country is looking for TRP, whether it is Minister Pius Goel or whether it is anybody. And they, they are only, you know, speaking what public wants to hear. They are not understanding the detail of the industry that, you know, five years there has been no increase in price in most of the micro markets. Costs have gone up by five to six percent year to year. We are absolutely back to the wall. You know, since last three years, there has been disruptions like demonetization, GST, RERA. As a result, most of the developers have not launched too many new projects. Very few projects have been launched. You know, the launching have gone down by at least 30% in last three years. And this year, post-COVID, I think it will go down by 50%. Result, there has been a lot of unsold inventory being cleared now. And gradually it is getting more clear. There has been super consolidation happening and it will be more consolidation. The, the total number of developers are shrinking. The, you, the projects are shrinking. So, you know, three, four months, this is a pain time when people are not taking decisions. And three, four months later, five months later, once the normalcy returns, people are out of this fear of Corona and pandemic. Business will be as usual. You see, lockdown has opened. You know, I announced a two-wheeler loan scheme in my office that, you see, anybody wants to buy two-wheeler, we will allow sanction a soft loan to the staff. People have booked that vehicles are not available. There is a waiting list for one, one, one month, two months, three months like that in different models. We started malls. I have two malls in Calcutta, the biggest mall, South City, and the another one is most popular, Acropolis. We are getting good results. People are going with the shopping bags. 90% of the, the footfalls are half because the cinema is not there. The bars are not open. Nine o'clock, the restaurants are closing. Mall has to close by seven o'clock because of the you know movement restriction and public transport availability. Mm -hmm. But 90% of the people are coming with the shopping bags, two, three shopping bags, everybody. People are enjoying in the mall. So, you know, the normalcy is coming back. Slowly, it is coming back. And the 
the people will start buying you know right now they were not able to visit the sites they were not able to move around uh, we will our sales people were trying to give virtual walk throughs and tours over the, uh, the this uh, video chats etc you know home is a serious thing people just can't take decisions like that you know just by video chat one can do a token booking some of them has done it there have been 20 25% sales during the lockdown also but i think now with this month onward the sales will start happening and you know prices may come down provided the government supports it the gst should come down the stamp duty should come down definitely if if those things come down you see then only the price can come down 33 rupees out of every 100 rupees goes into various kind of tax duties surcharge gst stamp duty and so on so forth we are managing with 67 rupees there we are paying land there we are paying all the all the all the construction cost our overhead our bank interest and the interest has been piling up you know the repo rate has gone down but one none of the bank has reduced the rate of interest so far so you know it is very easy for mr parik or mr goel to say all this thing we are not asking we are not begging to them we are only requesting them that please create the demand please uh, you know bring some incentive for customers to take decision so that the economy starts moving it is good for economy if you reduce gst for say 6 month or if you reduce stamp duty for few months or if you bring some introduction if you bring some introduction of the some exemption in income tax repayment of the loan home loan etc this will this will incentivize people to buy and that will ultimately run the economy this is what they have to understand this real estate is supporting 250 plus industry there are 5 crore construction worker and it is contributing 10% of gdp almost and 150 uh 180 billion uh, dollar industry so you know they have to take real estate as serious this is this real estate can and construction infrastructure all these three can become engine for the growth of the economy so i would say that you see okay your question straight answer some of the markets where there is oversupply like bangalore some areas of bombay some areas may be calcutta also the prime areas where the prices are 5 crore or 10 crore apartment or some areas of pune where there is oversupply some softening can happen but that also if the developer can afford see if he even if they want to reduce the price in those areas the circle rates are high now if i sell less than circle rate in those area where i can afford to i am not able to because the state government will 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 as fixed high circle rate and income tax will charge me under section 43c and 56210 Uh, the income tax on the on the on the circle rate so you know they, they have to understand all these issues just giving a comment will not solve the uh, problem of the industry absolutely i'm going to take it to professor venkatesh who has been working for with various governments for years and this is a, 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 a at one point magic bricks worked with him a, 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 he's from i am bangalore and uh, venki uh, you have tried uh, rationalizing guideline values circle rates uh, ready reckoner rates and so on what is your sense of why why is there this big discrepancy between what is in the market and what is the guideline value uh, a good question i think before i answer yours i want to just yeah. uh, follow up with uh, what mr motha was saying um, i think i totally agree with him that uh, it is not a one single homogeneous market for us to think about lowering prices and i just want to add one more factor to it which is that not all builders are alike in their financial condition sure so there may be some people for whom price reduction could make sense because they are carrying the inventory using their own capital right so if you assume inventory is nothing but a locked capital that you have already locked up so if you want to release it you have to do something to get them so that is uh, i just want to add that another variation you know that there are also certain builders who could last you know there is no there is no reason that price is the only factor uh, that should determine the uh, increase in demand so going back to your question uh, jayshree on the uh, circle rates i think think about it right so stamp duty revenue to a state is a big chunk i think it, it's about the third largest source of revenue tax revenue for for a, any any normal state 
So if you have a, such a large amount of revenues coming from one area, so obviously there is no much incentive to lower it, right? So that is why, you know, at any point in time, the best they could do is hold on to the existing rates, even though the market conditions might have changed. So many of them, in fact, when we had done this work for Karnataka, um, after going through the process, uh, even though you know it made sense at that time, that here is a, a, a process by which is not only transparent, but it will also be able to adjust to the market conditions much better. Uh, the government was not very keen, and partly because you know they want to keep the rates high so that they can continue to milk the sector. And I think I want to uh, emphasize the fact that real estate as a sector has been like a cash cow for many uh, rent-seeking groups in the economy, right? Whether it is politicians or you know, there are many people who use real estate as a way to seek rents. So therefore, many of the practices that we are now struggling okay. against uh, are all coming from that fact that you know the politician is not very keen to reform the sector. There is no transparency. There is not much uh, financing. You know the the kind of financing, the formal financing that you need. Any of those things are not available uh, for the sector. So I think uh, I, I totally agree with Mr. Mota that the government has not done a very good job of managing this very important sector. Right. There are multiple places where they have uh, just gone, I mean, literally left it in a very loose way, which is now coming to bite us during this crisis. That's right. Uh, before I go to uh, Mr. Sunil Garg for his tax uh, uh, advice, I'm going to uh, take it to Prabhakar and say, Prabhakar, we have been talking about the sector for such a long time. There have been several disruptions. The last two, three years have been a series of disruptions, right? Today, there are three or four things that the uh, sector is asking for. They're asking for uh, GST relief. They're asking for guideline value relief uh, to take uh, the income tax uh, relaxation in that income tax act. Uh, uh, in your view, what is it? What are the two, three things that they must immediately do? So uh, whether whether they uh, they think this industry was well managed, not well managed, they have to do it because it uh, it accounts for eight to fifteen percent of GDP of the country. Yeah, uh, most important thing is this, uh, Jaisri, that uh, somehow you will have to create demand because this pandemic has just killed the demand. It has finish the demand from the in the market so now the responsibility is of both developers as well as of the government government should do their bit its bit that they should reduce either the gst or not even the gst government should just do that okay fine those who are going to buy till december entire interest outgo on their home loan will be deducted from the taxable income even that will help lot of buyers to make decision to buy it today. And that will generate demand. But so far, prices go. Now look, if a developer can sell it, now this is the market-driven economy. This is the market-driven sector. Now, if they can sell it at one crore price, they should sell it at one crore. But if they are not able to sell at one crore, they can sell it at 80 crore. They should sell it at 80 crore because if they will pay 80, 80 lakh rupees, because if that 80 lakh they will not take today, then on one crore, they'll have to pay interest also. And on this 80 lakh, they will lose interest also. So this is a double winning for them because they are already stretched. So those who are stressed, they have no choice. And if they have a choice, they should not sell it. But then issue is this, which I want to raise here, that now suppose those developers who are stressed, they are selling at, at a discounted price. Will that not fix another benchmark in the market itself. That's what I want to understand, Mr. Mota, that now this is market, this is market driven economy. Now market will fix the price. It is not that developer can, and particularly in Indian market, no developer is that big that it can hold the price or it can control the price. Ultimately, it is the market which will decide the price. And they have to sell the product in the market if they have their inventory lying with them. And if the market says that no, you'll have to lower the now, government must play its own role. Government must reduce the taxes, or government should give some more incentive to make people buy. Because pent-up demand is there. 
only thing is this that you'll have to bring them out but another thing which is another so factor 6.25 to 7.25 is the lending rate that has been brought out the consumer in droves it's not uh, how do you what what gives you the confidence that suddenly suppose mr mota and the entire fraternity decide that we'll drop prices everybody will come out and buy uh, is no. the market ready to buy yet that's the that's what i'm putting on the table yeah exactly now, now look that that is very important factor now look economic in such a shape that many people are not sure that whether he is going to get his salary next month or not in that circumstances not many people will take this kind of a decision to take ki chalo hum 1 crore ka loan le lete hain koi bhi aap ne isme nahi sochega see the so, thing is that it is not necessary that uh, you know the, you can't force a customer to buy but you can make the conditions suitable for him to buy Yeah. The moment exactly. he is comfortable to invest in a house, you should be able to do it. Right That now, the, the government is not doing anything. Yeah, I agree uh, with you. But the yeah. point is that we have we have actually uh, seen prices holding for uh, four to five years, or even coming down in many micro markets. I have I, uh, we bring out the prop index. We still see that there are there has been even during the COVID the first two months we saw uh, between one and nine percent. uh lower uh, listed values on the site so prices will uh, conform to the markets i'm going to go to sunil garg first because i really want to understand oh, why this is why this one point uh, just i just want to tell you one point yeah. that we have also secondary market yeah that is not in the control of anybody Absolutely. and the primary market has to compete with the secondary market yes. and the prices in the secondary market is falling so yeah. the primary market players cannot say that no they will hold the price they simply can't right agreed uh, i'm going to first come to sunil garg so the point uh, here that we're raising here is that even if you if the developer drops prices there are certain uh, clauses of the income tax act which don't allow them to do so or you get penalized for dropping prices help us understand why that doesn't yeah. ever get fixed Jaisri, regarding the income tax or the GST, it's a double whammy situation for the builders. You know, if you sell at the discounted prices, you are doubly taxed. If you are not net selling that, then even you are taxed, which uh, I think Mr. Mota has skipped. Yes. You know what is the law? If yes. any builder doesn't sell the property within two years of the completion and the flats are there in the stock, then he has to pay tax as a deemed rent on that property. This is the law of the land. Yeah. Now coming back, coming back, coming back to the dropping of the price you know as mr pushkar has said if suppose the uh, price of the flat is 1 crore circle rate is 1 crore and you are selling it is for 80 lakhs then builder has to pay tax on that flat 20 lakhs as extra income and even the buyer buyer has to pay 20 lakhs under section it's a double taxation there it's a, it's a double taxation it's yeah. a double taxation and not only that if suppose because the flats change hands so many times if again that buyer who has uh, purchased discounted prices again sell it on say 85 lakhs then the he has again to pay the buyer of that property again to pay tax on the 15 lakhs because the circle rate is 1 crore so this is always a double whammy situation what happens the finance act 203 they they brought a provision 50c and the provision was for the capital assets practically it was for the capital asset and it was brought as an anti abuse method right. the government thinks there is always a underhand change cash in the property transaction that's why the provision was brought in but somebody suggested i do not know who suggested the government in 2013 that let us and let us bring the provision for the builders also basically they are the businessmen why why they are selling because the price always depends on the demand and supply and why anybody will sell the on a discounted price try to understand and what happened during 2004 to 2010 when the market was booming every as as venki said every state government they think it's a cow they try to milk it and they increase the prices of the flat or the circle rate so high now after 20 2014 when the price stopped dropping the situation is that in some markets practically the circle rate is much higher and uh, actual price is not and that another situation is that another confusion is that even you don't have any mechanism in the income tax to counter the uh, prices fixed by the government right the stage when you can counter is the assessment stage yeah. and then it will be a penalized situation 
you cannot even raise a question in advance that i am selling the uh, flat uh, at a discounted price is so there is no mechanism in income tax act yeah. that mandatorily you have to show the difference as your income so this is always this is a very uh, this is not a very good situation same is the case with gst if you sell the under constructed property 18% if you sell the constructed property then no gst no input but then you pay the stamp duty tax because the state government don't want to lose the revenue on account of stamp duty and central government they are not able to force them to bring them under the uh, gst regime this is the position it is a very confusing position we also have represented with the government that please at least amend section 43 ca and what the finance minister has done now they have said they they have brought the introduction ki okay up to 10% difference we are not saying to uh, going to say anything but what is the 10% yeah. if you are uh, selling below, below than 10% then the whole amount will be taxable yeah. so this situation is not good for the builders and yeah. i think this is a break for selling the flats i think the the bigger question jashri is that many of the government policies are designed for that 10% of people who are abusing the system right you know no. the the focus yeah, yeah. is always on those 10% of the population and yeah, the 90% have to pay the price we are proven otherwise the, 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 yeah, we are sorry. trying to catch the thief <laughs> <laughs> but we, yeah. we, we couldn't if push I, like, this if is if the position if i may if i may uh, put in here that you see okay there was a time when you know this uh, uh, black money was part of real estate transaction that is 15 years back 20 years back now you see with rera and all these things so much of transparency has come and the sector has become organized now we are you know doing uh, multi city operation multi projects you know everything is managed from the office we we go to site once in a while and you know things are coming reports are coming and the, there are audits and there are internal audits and everything is so transparent so that black money thing has gone but unfortunately government is not understanding that it was old time you know when this 50c came till that time there was some black money now it can be a little bit in the secondary market sometime it can be there but no organized developer indulges in any kind of cash transaction we can't afford to you see i am sitting here doing a conference with you my, firm, my i have a, about 18 sites going on in different cities and my sales people are doing the transaction if i allow cash money then he can pocket some money and he will not disclose it it's very simple for them so we can't do all these thing we have very very transparent system the government has to understand this and as you have rightly said it is just not 10% but maybe 1 or 2% for 1 or 2% the entire industry is suffering today the right. other point which i wanted to make if i may be if i may yeah. continue okay yeah. the other point which i wanted to say like you said that the uh, you know the market dynamics now real estate is a little different product it is not a, a comparison of a particular car model say about 1400 cc car there are three models of japanese two koreans and uh, you know one german and you make a car deco or car trade dot com there is a comparison table no real estate is different uh, you know uh, let me tell you a most important thing today has become for a customer is from whom he is buying very important every customer is now very well educated he knows what he is buying from whom he is buying what are the commitments of developer what are his past track record you know with good developers 50% 45% customers are through referral we have referral schemes where the customer bring customer so if he had a bad experience he will never bring a, another customer because it's a lifetime thing so you see and then you know there is there is a ticket size there is planning there is facility there is project size the the architect and the you know the specification there are so many things into it so you know you cannot just say that you know in x project it is price this the y project it should be that you know with the good brand the price can increase 10 15% because the good brands are uh, putting lot of cost in management they are putting lot of uh, you know value in their uh, construction and planning and uh, making sure that the quality controls and you know customer um, uh, services etc so there is a cost to it so you cannot say that you know it is all uh, absolutely market driven there are so many other factors also which i would like to uh, put on the table 
Yeah. No, Mr. Yeah. Nota, one thing that earlier there were only one or two very good developers used to be there. Now the number of good developers are also in large and ultimately the market will decide that whether this good developers product is very good. So I should pay him premium or not. I have seen some of the good developers are still commanding 15 to 20 percent premium from their neighborhood market, neighborhood apartments. But now there are a number of good apartments have come. Those are not selling. So now those players and they are also there are secondary market in those good apartments also. And they are investors, large number of investors are there. Now those investors don't want to hold today because holding cost is at least 10, 12 percent. Now they say that if I exit today, at least I will get. Now one thing only I want to say is here that developers should not be made to made to sell their project. They should not be pushed to that corner where they have no option. So like if the bank is not giving them any loan, now things are like that. Then that they'll have no option but to sell only. That situation should not come to an extent. But ultimately, they'll have to raise their funds. Then only even institution will come and help them. If they will think that only institution will keep on helping them, I don't think that situation will continue for long. I'll, 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 I'll let Venki finish what he was yes, saying. Yes, no, I just wanted to add two things. One is uh, what Mr. Motha was saying about the change in the industry, you know, the way the industry's practices have changed in the last 10 years. I think a large number of it is for Kadai and the organized sector. So this, uh, this industry still has a large number of unorganized players, which if it is reducing because of RERA and other factors, but they are still one of the reasons why the industry has gotten uh, some bad rap in the past, because it is very hard to contain somebody who is only doing one or two developments in their lifetime. You know? So that is one issue. Uh, the second thing which I wanted to uh, bring up with what Mr. Sina was talking earlier, what happens when, let's say, the industry reduces prices? And we did a project for one of the housing regulator uh, some years back, which is to say that if suppose tomorrow the prices fall, then literally what happens in the banking uh, books is that they need to mark to market their loans to, to make sure that you know, they have to revise their capital requirements. For example, if they have given a loan, and their, their loan has to be at least 80% of value, right? The loan to value should be at least 80% in order to not to uh, violate RBI guidelines. So, but if the prices drop, many of the banks, in fact, we found a couple of cities, uh, almost, you know, some 10 or 12% uh, additional capital has to be put in because, you know, the now most of these banks are holding distressed loans because their loan to value is greater than 80%. So this, if it happens in a larger scale, this could uh, further exacerbate the problem. Right. So if at all, yeah. you know, the price thing, reduction yeah. has to happen. Yeah. Yeah, one thing I want to tell you, sir, that way back, I remember 2013-14, we also raised this issue that banks were might be finding their security less value than what the loan was. But in India, there's one very good aspect is this, that all the borrowers have to give their personal guarantee. So that is why the situation like US and other countries should not come and cannot come in India, where even if the loan value goes down, first of all, the equity part, that loan to value is 80%, 20% equity is always there. And suppose if two, three years has already been paid, so at least 15, 20% is already paid. So 40% value is already paid up. So only 60% like that remains. Besides that, even if suppose one wants to default and just give the key to the banks and banks say that, okay, I will not, and banks sell that product and is not able to recover its entire money. Then bank goes back to the borrowers again and say that, boss, you'll have to pay. And I have seen the case where they have attached the salary of that gentleman because his product is, was not able to give the bank entire loan. Sir, I, actually, we did the data. We actually worked with the data from some several large uh, financial, financial institutions to the housing market. And we found that quite a bit of them, if, if you have to mark to market to the latest values, they would be violating the RBI guidelines. The RBI credit guidelines does not include personal guarantee. They, they only look at the collateral value. And the personal guarantee, in my view, many of them are not, uh, they, it's very no, hard no, to actually enforce. No, it. no, sir. 
surfacey acts are hundred percent. They'll have to give it. No, no, they, they give it. The but I'm just saying, if you ask a typical banker, no, they most of them will say that they are not banking on personal guarantees because That's if that is the case, you know, there the is no resource. risk in any of the. That so is the last recourse. I'm going to actually say that uh, here the the issue that Venki is raising is that. The RBI has one set of norms. The banking system has one set of norms. The RBI is uh, uh, mod, uh, actually moderating the banking system, which has to follow, which has other uh, norms to conform to. And then the developers who have to return. See, there have been excesses in the past, and we all have to accept it, Mr. Mota. That's that's a reality. There have been excesses in the past, but over the last few years, with with a lot of loss, whether it is uh, demonetization, rare uh, uh, GST, we have moved to a, a system of compliance. And in the in a compliance system, when you again uh, assume that the uh, industry is uh, actually not not uh, you know all the practices are wrong, and therefore you will not support the industry. That is where this industry is actually faltering. And I think in, uh, the system is definitely moving towards compliance, but there have been a series of shocks, one after the other, and that they have not been able to weather. Now, uh, actually, Venki, at what uh, frequency should guideline values or circle rates be uh, changed? And because right now, there's no norm anywhere. See, in Karnataka, for example, there is a law which says it has to be uh, updated once a year. At least it has to be looked at. The values have to be uh, looked at at least once a year. And the government may choose not to revise it. What is but the at least you know, how do they how do they assess uh, what should be the value? Yeah. See, the thing is that see, you don't want to. I mean, if you go by the principles of changing guideline value, you don't want to do it too often because then it will completely add uncertainty to the market. At the same time, you should not do what you're doing now, which is don't change at all for two three years. Yeah. So I think my my uh, my gut feel tells me that it has to be at least once a year. And if you use, uh, like, there are tons of uh, scientific models that are available which can allow you to uh, use the estimate that is from the market. I think as as uh, Mr. Sinha was saying, right, this is a market-driven sector. So you can actually get information from the marketplace. And many of the transactions now are happening above, above the table. They do not have uh, as much under-reporting as it used to be in the past. So you should be able to estimate what the market values are and then accordingly adjust. So I don't see any reason why you can't do it more than, I mean, at least once a year, they should try to do it. I have a suggestion here, Jasri. Yeah. Like, particularly in this segment, primary market, particularly, where the developers are selling product to the buyers and they fix a price and they also show it in their book also, in p &L account. So whatever the developers of that area is selling at, I believe that should not come under scrutiny because of this circle rate. Whatever the rate at which the developers are saying that, because look, a stamp duty is normally charged on only transaction value. Mm -hmm. Later on, government came in with a new method that, okay, they started fixing a price and they said that you will not have to pay lower than that, but you, if you are selling at higher than that, you'll have to pay at higher than that. So now, basically, for developer, government should accept in their entire country that those who are maintaining their PNL account and those who are doing business out of that, their price should be taken on the face value and the stamp duty should be charged on that. And on that basis only, the stamp rate of the stamp duty rate should be fixed of that area. I believe that could have solved the entire problem. But yeah, I, uh, I don't uh, want to respond to you. Yes, Mr. Sina, to add what you have suggested, it's a wonderful suggestion because we have to declare our prices on rare sites also. Suppose if I am, exactly. if I if I have a motive of taking black money, I have to declare my price. So say, suppose if I am selling for ten thousand rupees and the actual price is twelve thousand rupees, I am declaring ten thousand tomorrow. Somebody may may come and I have to sell him, so I am losing two thousand rupees. Exactly. And, and, and by saying that I want 2,000 in cash, he can make a complaint to rail authorities. Exactly. So now we have moved on. The government should understand that with this RERA has been a wonderful law. It is giving protection to the consumer. It is bringing transparency. So the government like has used to bring discipline among developer and to protect the consumer should also use it to reform their laws.
sir i i disagree with both of them i think i'm a, a little bit more cynical in this uh, in this space i think the question is for example as uh, mr mota was saying we actually have data from rera in fact we got data from the rera themselves and many of them do not fill in the prices so the price information as you said it is there in rera under the law that you have to provide but not all reras enforce it that information is not available easily so the rera authorities should enforce this no yeah yeah it is so there so that's what so, i'm saying i'm not uh, saying i think mr mota's point that the government should uh, reform the laws if if the uh, price is not there ask for the price make it mandatory if the uh, if there are other uh, excesses fix the uh, uh, you know fix the rules so that you can get the right values i think sunil wants to say something he's been wanting to say right rules suppose <laughs> if if the vehicle <laughs> is not working no no see where Mr. the Mota. problem is is it the problem in the engine or in the tire So the no, Jaisri, Mr. Mota, rather criticizing the government, we should also introspect in ourselves. It is a hard fact there are underhand cash transactions. Sir, least... very few. I don't agree with you. Only in secondary no, market, no. no organized developer does. No, no. I don't agree with you, sir. Sir, there are listed company okay. which have to prepare their account, which have to be submitted at all the places. Sir, I am Now, a candidate. Still, if you I, think, sir, no, please try to understand. Rather, see, please. i in the in the my first submission i also said this is a law which is bring as a ntbg provision but has become a hurdle for the builders but on the same side sir we should also introspect ourselves there are miscalculation there are uh, some builders are not doing very good things there are underhand transactions okay in at least in the land deals still the rate prices of the land particularly not the flat circle rates are low then the land prices are high as far as law is concerned both sides has to consider to each other because what the government is doing is doing on the basis of what data what the feedback they are they are getting and that's why that's why that's why in the budget also that's why in the budget also why then why why the government is not uh, hearing to the developers sir please understand Sir, just a minute. One thing, sir. One thing I want to ask you. I want to ask you that even today there are property which are selling at higher than the stamp duty rate price. Okay. Now there, if the seller wants, if the or the the developer might say that okay, fine, we want to charge you stamp duty at the circle rate only, and so they can lower the price. But today there are not buyer who will ready to pay them at the black money with the black money account they will say that okay so i will pay you in white this much money and this much in black so that market is going and anyway what you are suggesting that kind of theft is happening even today so if for that income tax department and your department chartered accountants they should have better uh, scrutiny or the better way to monitor it sir but so it, I, is, all, it might be but it's very minuscule for this you cannot ignore the interest of the organized industry this is what my humble opinion see the thing is so it is not sir there every sir there every kind of builder every kind of developer as venkia has also said we have to study the data from the rera from the government also and what the government decide i am not supporting the government i am not but what i am saying please to try to understand we should criticize we should, should have complaint with the government but we should also introspect in ourselves that's why the real estate such a big industry supporting 250 industries and giving uh, direct labor to five crore still not have a uh, status of a industry and it's a non private so, 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 on the table here one builders, minute why builders do not get the loan from the financial institution sir Which any is act that is hampering transaction is regressive and that will kill the market understand. and that is that is not in the interest of anybody try to understand jayshree if i can add one point here which is to say that see even without any of the things that they were talking about the very fact that the moment you use prices disclosed by developers then their definition was what the price means will be just will be uh, compromised so for example you know some people might just give the basic you know shell of the flat as yes. the price so i think the moment you leave any kind of discretion in the hands of the builder then you are in for trouble so i think the better thing i would go with the earlier suggestion of mr sinha which is 
take the market value of properties of both the second hand i mean basically a property is a property it doesn't matter what the uh, how the people are viewing it they're going to use it to live so there is enough data on both the secondary and the primary market in a particular locality it should not be that difficult to figure out what the market values are and then use that to for benchmarking your circles actually the thing is that nobody ever tried to figure out what was that market value every uh, a developer who puts more into his project is a premium project there are reasons why he would uh, give it a value uh, a higher value if it is a luxury property he can he can price it under see that is why it. see that is why you have a lot of models available which can tease out the premium for each and every element which goes into a property Exactly. whether it is the brand value whether it is swimming pool whether it is a, a, a lift i mean all the amenities can be individually priced and it's not that difficult as all you need is data yeah. and that is that is one thing i find that data is the one thing that we do one minute with the motor the point is that what you, what I, what i've noticed is we've, we we are researchers we understand we've been doing a lot of research on uh, real estate but instead of being able to take the data and say that now let me uh, 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 craft models on it we are actually struggling to figure out what how many units were sold what is the price of that uh, of the units that were sold and these kind of things things which many markets many organized markets take for granted are things that are not disclosed and it's even though you have creda you have naredco if I, the most uh, closely guarded secret is how much how many pro units are actually sold it's all an uh, 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 absolutely it's, it's, okay i have tried several years talking to creda about this every time it hits the wall even the data and now i mean even when they, they themselves complain that many of the vendors who provide the data they don't provide a good data you know but the fact of the matter is they do not provide any data on their own and i have tried several times you know to say that we will host it in i am bangalore and so on but at the end of the day when it comes to the shove it does not you know the sector does not want to reveal it. data transparency is still uh, a, a great uh, you know it's it's a big uh, myth there is no data transparency in this sector and i think mr mota uh, while uh, um, you know i think i think what uh, he was saying that you should introspect i think the more data you bring into the market uh, you bring into the open the more transparent the sector becomes rera did that to a very large extent is every rera enforcing that everything that is supposed to come is it being uh, published it's not try taking some data out of a rera i am a consumer and i go to a rera and figure uh, trying to figure out whether this what is this developer track record that was the whole intent of rera the spirit of rera that's not possible it's very 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 opaque and transparent uh, and uh, difficult to find but having said that i still believe that the covid shock if the uh, industry is not protected against the covid shock it's not only the real estate industry that's going to suffer it's the banking industry the bankers have lent the uh, the 25000 crore uh, fund that was created was because the banking sector has lent to not only the projects and the developers and the projects the banking sector has also lent to the retail consumers so it has lent on both sides and if you don't protect this industry which contributes about 8 to 15% of our gdp and is the one, is the second largest uh, um, employment generator two big industries are going to go down together it's not only real estate it will be banking and that's where i i want to uh, issue a very strong statement to the government that i don't care what the uh, solution is but there has to be a solution you can't brush it under the carpet and hope it will go away because it is not going away you dropped the uh, uh, the interest rates it went uh, 6.25 is the lowest that we have had i think ever but it's not that the consumers are coming out in droves to buy so there is a problem there and the problem needs to be fixed as an industry i think the industry needs to figure out what can be done and as a as as a consumers as a government and the rbi you have to figure out what role the regulation will play and bringing in acts you know the guideline the government doesn't keep its share of the bargain either it does not upgrade its uh, guideline guideline values or circle rates regularly it does not check whether the uh, the, uh, the market rates are in tandem with what, whatever is the established rate so the the uh, problems are on both sides 
both sides need to uh, get fixed only then will this industry move forward i'm going to take some of the queries that have come here because this is a show where we uh, ask our consumers to uh, ask their queries yes just quickly, just quickly two things if i can be yes. allowed yes. to add this yeah one is that you see as far as the rera is concerned i don't agree with you that data are not available it may be depending on the rera authority state to state as far as my west bengal is concerned our wb hira it is not rera it is hira yeah. but it is same law same law it is only name is changed is absolutely transparent all the data are available you can open the website and you will get everything in fact the rera officers are sending whatsapp message to us with you know how many projects registered how many units and all that so and so forth we have complied uh, we have compiled data here from west bengal i will send you the data we have all the data our youth wing is working on it and will be very happy to share data with you sure. okay that's as far as west bengal is concerned maybe in some of the states the authority is not yet geared up so they should gear up and so, these are large markets we talk it's a new law we need to push that we need it's to push the right button it's if really not years. Years you, is some other, other other draconian thing is not the answer now second thing i wanted to say second thing i wanted to say with regard to the price sensitivity supply over supply as i said that the, every market is different like west bengal is a very different market calcutta is a different market it is not a market with the uh, speculative buying it is absolutely 99% end user market we don't have a big secondary market secondary market can be 1 or 2% of the total market size and we have no over supply here because the developers here are very organized you will not find cases like amrapali and uh, supertech and dupertech and all those thing and uh, dp reality <laughs> all in west bengal you have not seen this all these thing here we are very disciplined lot here in west bengal and west bengal prices are always very it, it has never been volatile you know so and because there is not over supply also we developer are happy in doing what we can what we can uh, you know uh, digest we don't want to take more on our plate and then you know get uh, in in trouble so that's as far as my market is concerned where i am operating from i have projects in pune chennai uh, odisha and uh, i had uh, done some projects in raipur also but as far as calcutta is concerned it is very disciplined market and i don't see calcutta most of the projects are between 3 to 6000 rupees where the margin are 300 to 500 rupees there can be any drop it's thus not possible because there is no over supply also and we are selling you know now this month we have recovered to almost 40 45% of the sale next month our target is to reach 60 65% of our normal sale so i think you know west bengal and the rbi doesn't take only kolkata na the rbi takes the entire country's market and you have some huge markets like maharashtra npr uh, karnataka you know and the whole country is suffering because of the some developer from the northern india it's not only north india sir it's not only north india i i believe that there have been excesses in uh, many markets across the country exactly. actually and the the way to put it jashree is the investor driven markets yes. yeah i've seen most of the excesses this is the right. this you the, the, this is the nerve because it's both investor driven and the consumer driven right. and the, the expectation of investor at the early stage when the project is growing is very high and builder has to make the investments Uh, so attractive for the investor, and the rate of interest charge is very high. That's why all this flip flop, yeah, what happened? This happened. Now the investor, the investor has has gone away from the market. Let me give a new view. Let me give a new view. Please understand, sir. Like other industries, it's not a direct consumer industry. The phase of two three years, investors they expect very high returns, and you know when the prices soars up in any property market, and it goes like anything see the phase of 2004 to 2014 no so but sir i would uh, see in globally another, so the another, investor another, market another, is... another another problem everywhere is, another problem is the land prices and the flat prices the structural prices and the rent prices still there is a very large gap if you see the circulate of the land no. it is still below the please understand. i don't agree i don't agree sir it's not, i don't it's, agree to it's, it's not anymore it's, it's not anymore I, i can give you that i can give you the no, 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 no. it's not anymore but i can give you the you know when the land prices are low the politicians are putting money in in land i have the data from ministry of finance i have data from ministry no, no, of finance I, i also agree land values circulate are much lower and yeah, part of the reason I, is that I, land is used by politicians to 
ओके that is for the individual builders uh, seller but 43 ca for the business person please dilute that please make appropriate provision as mr prabhakar has said make some provision make some uh, regulation to value valuation or early valuation or getting a certificate from income tax officer but both the provision 43 ca and 50 c should not be at par and moreover 562 for the buyer and seller they should also be at par because it leads to double taxation double whammy for the but as i said uh, that we have to introspect both government also and the builder also sir actually i think the problems are at the government end as well as uh, at the uh, industry end and uh, somewhere it has become a face off the government doesn't seem to um, give way and the uh, industry has said we cannot cut prices and it's it's become a face off and in this kind of crisis situation you need to find a middle path and that is that is why we've started this dialogue let me go to some of the questions that have come there's a gentleman called lalit butoria who has been giving us a lot of uh, uh, queries and he says that developers have to reduce their margins as marketing conditions have changed over the last few decades now there is ample supplies and totally customer driven previously it was supplier driven also the main component in the real estate price is the cost of land which needs correction as now cities have expanded and better communication channels also home loan interest rates are at all time low so developers should think of reducing rates and generate demand my contention is that just lowering uh, prices will it bring back the demand will it do you think so mr motha if you drop prices suddenly uh, consumers will come out and buy no no definitely consumer will always like even if you give him uh, if, at a low price if i am a customer if i am buying a car i will always look for some discount something or something some yes. freebie or something if if i am buying a property to be tomorrow for my own use i will always look for the consumer is always there to look for some some uh, discount or some better deal is the so, industry prepared that, to give no end to it. but the is question is that how much one can give Yeah. So today, can you the, give uh, anything I, at all? Is there is there any leeway for you to uh, entice the consumer with a price drop? So already done. Already, you see, last five years the prices have not gone up. I can give you the data from various city where the same prices are there and the cost have gone up. So that itself is a discount. Okay, uh, which means that you're not actually offering a discount. You're saying that there is no scope to reduce. Then, no I scope. want you all. Uh, no, no, uh, I, I'm I'm surprised because if you look at a traditional uh, retail shop, they jack up the list price and then give fifty percent discount. You know? yeah. that's that how they fool the customer. <laughs> so I'm that just saying that in, I no, but I'm I'm just thinking that see the list price nobody knows what it is, so everybody can come up with some number, right? So I don't know at least for optics purpose. I don't know why the industry is fighting that. You know, they can keep no, the net price the same. A few minutes back, a few exactly. minutes back, saying that you know the market dynamics and comparison, and it's very easy in real estate. In a retail shop, when you are buying a particular, particular, it is not possible to compare. There, you can jack up hundred percent and then give fifty percent discount. But in a property, it is not possible. Sir, in fact, I would say the opposite. Sir, the property is so unique. that you are list price is your own i mean it's very hard to take one person's list price but and compare it with somebody else there is enough and more competition in the market no no but i'm just saying just from optics just to, as a side comment to jayesh that, that doesn't happen i beg the, to differ uh, with you venkatesh it okay. doesn't happen in real estate so, so in, there is in nothing account, called rack price nowadays sir every individual has their own price and it depends on his negotiating capacity so, that see i think uh, jayesh a lot of a uh, lot of discounts are already happening yeah, because exactly. he said Through freebies and all, because nobody yeah, yeah. knows the net price the customer is paying. So I think the cost of moving 
into a property has already gone down in many yeah. places. And again, because of the opaqueness in the industry, it is not coming out. So we only no, no. see the Sir, price. We have done a story here in Delhi that the, one some developer have said that, okay, you deposit 10%, it will be treated as 20% of the value of the property. 15%, it will be treated as 30% of the entire thing. So this kind of thing is are already in the market. People are ready to give. Now look, this is market driven. Now you might sell it that government will, uh, whether you are uh, doing it because of the government or not. No, no, no. It, you are doing it because of the market and you have to sir, pay your loan. So let, me, capacity is not so let me add one more thing, which I've been telling for a while. See, the one of the big concerns in the real estate industry, because it is staged development, right? So a customer who bought six months back may come to you and demand the same discount that you're giving to today's customer. So there is a possibility in the real estate market because every all the sales are not happening at the same time. So one simple solution, I don't know why it is not thought of, a simple solution could be that, suppose let's say the builder offers a plan saying that I, I take the property today at this today's price. In the next one year, if the prices drop, and again, how do you determine that? It has to be based on some uh, national or, or some uh, price uh, index, which is not controlled by the developer so that the customer can trust the index, right? So for example, whether you can take Residex or any other price indices, you could just say that if that price index for this locality goes down by 10%, I'll give you 10% discount. This is, so it's a, in a way, building the confidence to the customer that like you can buy the property. That is happening, sir. Price it protection, it is good. In, it is it already is happening. happening. In Maharashtra, no, I know, but in I'm in Delhi yeah. also. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you so are seeing the, in a way that you see if the price protection itself yes. is not bringing customers to the market, yeah. then it is a much bigger problem that you were talking exactly. about, right? Exactly. People are reluctant to that's what this is pointing big ticket, out uh, liability. Yeah, and that's the point I was making. Exactly. And that is price protection that some developers are offering. There is the lowest interest rates that I've seen in a long time, but I haven't seen the consumer still biting. So there exactly. has to be and and, and the. Uh, can can prices just drop by say can you say i'll drop 10 percent prices you can't do that there may be uh, developers who are negotiating at the negotiating table with uh, serious buyers that's yeah. happening already in the last three, four, uh, three to four years which is what i think mr mota was already saying that they are they have come forward there are negotiations happening there are price corrections happening at that level. But can they afford to say that, yes, I drop prices by 10%, 15%? That does not seem to be a... Yeah. See, that, that itself is, I said, this is a business decision, yeah. right? So yeah. there's no government cannot come and say what the business should charge. <coughs> Ultimately, it is their ability to carry the inventory by paying for it. You know, yeah. If the builder can last carrying the inventory for another two more years without dropping prices, then that is their call. You can't force that to on the builder. I think, I think the point that Mr. Goyal made was that if you can carry your inventory and you can continue in business, please go ahead. But then don't ask us for uh, freebies. If you expect us to give you anything, the government today does not have the uh, capacity to give. See, but the, my, my, uh, ret, uh, my reply to uh, Mr. Goyal would be the fact that, you know, the government has dropped the ball on this sector in many ways. Yes. And forget about supporting the builder. You know, they just have to support the industry in a sensible way. See, just to make the policies consistent, you know, that itself will go a long way in resolving some of the issues of the sector. You know, things Absolutely. about what the state exactly. government does, central government does, similarly what the banks do, NBFCs do. So all of these things, if somebody can rationalize all the policies yeah. to have, you know, to be able to talk the same language, that yeah. itself will help the industry in a big way. Absolutely. Everything, auto industry, so many other industries are also suffering. Everybody needs some kind of a help. So I, I have another question from Aman Siddiqui. This maybe you will be able to answer. What role does this uh, do, do circle rates play in the cost of a property? Uh, Sunil, you want to take that? What role? What role does do circle rates play in the cost of a property? First of all, if the circle rate is high, uh, is high then you have to pay the stamp duty on that. Yeah. Because it's a state subject. Yeah. And uh, as I said earlier also, uh, you cannot sell the property below the circle rate. They have to pay income tax also. But I want to add, Jashri, in our earlier discussion, uh, 
to yeah. the builders who are who wants to sell the uh, sell the flats at the discounted price there is a mechanism in section 43 ca when you can apply you can go before the assessing officer that uh, my actual price has been down or is uh, less then he may refer the case to the valuation officer then he will not be taxed he will not be charged to tax this is sir, an but, sir but that is the roundabout way sir you, know, you are making the business um, businessman run around just to prove to the income tax officer so no, whenever we raise the issue of actually also no no sir mr gang there is automatic mechanism in the section but what we said that make it an advanced process otherwise there is a confusion always right and anyway it has been a uh we we in a sector that is being milched by a lot of people yeah, so yeah. Uh, you don't want to go to one more authority and say let me prove it and so they are think... increase the limit from 5 to 10% because of this region that there are differences in the prices yeah. so now they have brought it to 10% difference where circle rate and sell price then it will not be attacked yeah uh venki you had something to say no no see the circle rate was the original idea of by the government uh, give its own estimate of market value because nobody was revealing it i think uh, that whole notion can be scrapped mm -hmm. if we, if you all agree that the rera rera is going to capture prices and then from there we should be able to determine what the two prices then i don't think we need circle rate concept at all no. i think it was in the earlier generation when people were not disclosing truth no? that yeah. was uh, so i think it is an anachronism in the current age Okay, now I've uh, the, got the same. Aman Siddiqui asking, what are the steps that both the government and developer community can take to bring down prices, uh, property prices in metros? Uh, while Mr. Mota, uh, uh, you know, Pune and Kolkata have been fairly stable markets, the market the prices have not fluctuated wildly. If you look at Maharashtra, if you look at uh, if you look at Mumbai, MMR, you look at uh, NCR, you look at Bangalore, prices have actually uh, fluctuated quite a bit. what can developers do and what can uh, governments what should governments do to ensure a more uh, stable market you want to take that mr motha no you see again as we have been discussing that you know if a, in a particular micro market if there is more supply and developers have to clear the inventory they have to clear the inventory even at a loss even at a discount so they will do they it clear. absolutely market driven thing that's number one number two with regard to the government thing what you have said government has to look into that you know not by uh, reducing tax but how to generate the demand there are various means of generating demand see they can offer a six month window where you know like somebody suggested here in the panel that you know whatever uh, you know repayment has been done of loan income tax exemption is a beautiful solution then you know there can be some uh, uh, you know incentive in some some gst reduction for for the time being Say only a six month or eight month window, so that you know the industry can breathe at least. The customer will come back, the industry will start uh, running, and then you can withdraw this. You give it a particular time, six months, so that people will feel urgency and they will come. So these are the few things I I would like to say. Neil, do you think that the GST rates can drop, and what what stops the government from doing that? There are two three reasons. As far as eighteen percent GST is concerned, on uh, Constructed flats, then you are getting the input also. And sir, most it is not, uh, uh, sir. I would like to correct you, sir. There has been amendment two years back. Now it is not eighteen percent with input. Now it is five percent on the flat without input. So yeah. as a result, our cost have gone up. In fact, our cost have gone up by three hundred fifty. Let's let's. Let, let, so coming to that, sir. If, if you were, if you had an under construction project. You had the option of opting yes. for eighteen percent no, with no, 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 no. It was no. the law has changed. All the Change. projects post January two thousand eighteen, uh, the, the the you know the, uh, there was a cut off date. If any project is started that. It is five percent without input credit. Yeah. But that is something and that the developers had asked for, sir. Exactly. We had an eighteen exactly. percent with input tax no, credit. It's no, the developers. No, So oh, I want to say there is no input credit. The customer is paying five percent. I am just putting the facts. I am not arguing on it. I am yeah. just putting the facts on the table that yeah. in residential property where the value is more than forty-five lakhs, it is five percent where we are not getting any input credit. And because we got it a relief for the customer, so that customer feels that okay, he is only paying five percent. Otherwise, earlier it was twelve percent. You know, eighteen percent less discount of the land. It was twelve percent. And 
for flats less than 45 lakhs with with some area restriction and all it is 1% yeah uh, yes sir but it's it's mostly optics i don't think uh, it's only for premium properties that the uh, uh, benefits have come for affordable housing it uh, the input tax uh, removing input tax credit has actually pushed up the values not pushed down the values so it was optics saying that you have only 1% but no, the 5% that that, that 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 you know benefit has gone to customer and the cost of construction have gone because customer is not paying he is not ready to increase the price if i was selling 5000 rupees per square feet 12% so now i'm saying 5 5000 per square feet plus 5% so my input which i was getting i am not getting so that 300 rupees is gone from my profit so wherever the developer could absorb that they have absorbed wherever they could not they have increased say by 100 200 300 you must understand please understand that the developers does not have control on the price is so much of competition these days you go in the market you you look for one apartment you will get 20 options yeah. and in the primary market and 20 options in the secondary market True. there is a huge competition now please understand this yeah yeah, yeah. and and uh, uh, that is why there is so much window shopping going on among consumers also They, that's good. They do. That's good. The consumer must get the, all the options. After all, he is buying a home. He must, yeah. uh, you know, do all the window shopping. He must uh, adjust all the options. He must educate himself. I am very happy for consumer. It should yeah. happen. And Rera is biggest source of information. He can get all the projects on the Rera. He can get, download the information. Then he can go for window shopping. And the the, the may the best uh, builder win the customer. Why not? Not It's so easy. Rera is not so easy. Getting information out of Rera is not so easy in every state. In my state, it is easy. Yes, 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 sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In West Bengal, Ma Maharashtra also it is easy. I know about two states. Maharashtra also it is easy. In Bengal, it is very easy. See, if I if I want to join in on this uh, question yeah. that you asked, right? What yeah. can the government do? Yeah. I think on the demand side, I think it, despite I think there are a lot of the suggestions that are given out here. Yeah. um still i think the concern among customer would be should i take in a big ticket uh, liability at this stage i think that is going to be very hard to break until some level of a resolution comes on the medical side for covid you know whether we get a vaccine yeah. or you know some level of certainty comes in but what i am concerned much more than yeah. this is the fact that now large number of financial institutions who are strapped for liquidity who are going to face the music when you know for, let's say a few developers who are living on the edge default you know there could be a financial contagion which is not i don't think our economy can take you know there is a whole lot of uh, nbfcs and banks who are exposed to this sector so if at all if i have to suggest to the government i think they should provide some backstop either through this uh, bad bank kind of situation where they can take those loans out because the government or the rbi can hold on to these assets for a longer period than a private institution can uh, which is what happened in the uh, uh, 2008 crisis where just remove these uh, loans from the balance sheet of nbfcs and banks and protect them so that they can at least you know start the lending process again because if the moment a few nbfcs get into trouble then this sector is again going to be the first sector where they will stop lending now this is going to be another uh, chain effect which yeah. i think is much bigger problem today than the customer demand because customer demand ultimately it's up to the customer to figure out whether it is is ready in a big ticket yes i i we have actually overshot our time limit but i'm still going to take two more questions because i think the questions that they asked are very very critical um how can we keep the cost under control on the construction material side and is there anything that we can do to reduce the construction period and mr mota i would like you to respond to these two questions okay two things one is that the government must act against the cartelization by cement and steel people Absolutely. we have all and to prime minister that is one major source of our cost yeah. second is that you know this cost can come down by uh, you know we have an approval period of you know ranging from say 8 months minimum to 2 years in different state and different uh, geography and the bulk of this time is because of the environment clearances now you know you are getting the same kind of you know uh, cut paste copy environment clearance for almost all the project depending on the size and all but there is a process of committee presentation this that and all those things 
so the the government is trying its level best here the government is not the villain i must say the government has trying government has tried its level best to uh, to delegate this power to the approval authority with the set of guidelines that these are the things you have to follow and then there will be ultimate when the project is complete before ct all these things can be checked and this will be part of sanction condition like for sanction condition there are uh, aviation condition there are uh, some uh, you know uh, what what you call it regulation lines etc so this is there but there are some authority some ngos and somebody and i think they are funded by the touts and the the, the consultants who are doing this environment clearance they they, they you know they, they these ngos etc are front of them and they are stalling this process so you know my approval process world bank is saying that you know this can be ease of doing business index the construction permit is is a very important thing and in bombay and delhi it is included in calcutta also they are doing it now you know they are talking about 15 days clearance one month clearance and all but how can it happen you know i am paying interest at the rate of 11 12% on my uh, land and the transaction what i have done and if if i my project is delayed by uh, one and a half year 25% cost has gone up so how do i reduce my cost the approval process if this reduces the time limit can be reduced like in singapore and all the architects are giving approval there are set guidelines and the builders are supposed to make like that and there are stringent penalty so instead of you know you know having every authority fire authority separate approval this authority separate approval we are talking about one window but it is like microsoft window where window after window is opening so unless unless we reduce this uh, cut down this time because this is unproductive it is not helping anybody and the day yes, can you very say? simple solution right i mean we uh, simple solution no, for the environment is that rather than it uh, cost can come down immediately with that 10 to 15% cost can come down immediately that we all are now following the new technologies new aluminum form work with the korean technology and all where the construction is very fast we have enough of mechanism now available so as far as the construction it's available sector, but not used i would disagree sir i have i have uh, i visit construction sites around the country the mm -hmm. form work yes aluminum form work is, uh, has been adopted in uh, a large measure but otherwise technology we, we uh, because our labor is so cheap it was more uh, on site construction than off site madam if you have time i can tell you you know earlier there used to be all the casting material used to go on the labor's head now we are using pumps now we are using rmc rmc ready mix concrete coming from the factory no site mixing Absolutely. lot of you know material handling all the bricks tiles everything is going with the cranes etc so lot of mechanization has happened earlier so world has moved forward you know, now days, even the digging was you know, for the earth was done manually now there are jcb machines but a lot of in, in mechanization has come but you must understand that you know after all what is the cost i have to deliver a project constructed maximum within 40 to 50 dollars i have done a project in in colombo and i have visited the markets in singapore everywhere uh, singapore and other uh, other asian countries nowhere the construction cost is less than 100 dollars 100 to 150 dollars here we are selling less than 100 dollars so we have to also see how much mechanization we can bring we can't and then there was a law of excise and all so if you bring the pre casted this thing there was excise so you have to understand all those things here here i would say it's not that you don't use technology but this is where you negotiate and say that let's drop the excise on uh, construction equipment so that it has been yeah. a long standing so demand i'm telling you the size of with the with the sizes we are getting into there is no other way than to get mechanizing mechanization we are getting into it earlier this aluminum foam work was luxury now we are seeing that with this we are reducing the cost and getting better quality of construction my walls uh, with the, with the brick work i i always have a, a complain of some hairline crack or something with this aluminum foam book i get beautiful absolutely clean razor sharp uh, walls mm -hmm. so so this technologies are being used now and you will see every year the industry is only matured in last 7 8 years you must appreciate in last 7 8 years industry has been very matured i agree i is going to it you know the industry will become 3 trillion industry by 2030 it is 180 billion now so we have to look for that and for that the so, government so jayshree yeah. to work no just to add to the the environmental clearance some of those environmental clearance or the aviation clearance can be done at a locality level rather than individual project level mm -hmm. you now that doesn't make sense to do it so by using data that uh, the builders provide up front 
and then say that in this particular locality anything about this particular height yeah. is automatically cleared you know so it can be a much faster process than the current way where every project has to go through the clearance Right. But when master plan is approved, why all this clearance so is required? It has happened. When it in ABS, yeah, exactly. Happened. They yeah. have now online thing. It's beautiful. Only yeah. where the certain pockets is the problem. But environment, the government of India is. I must give due credit to government of India. They are trying, but it is some litigation happening here and there. Every time they bring something, somebody goes to court. Somebody goes to green bench, and it is installed. People do not understand that by going into this, they are ultimately end consumer is suffering. That's right. I agree. Uh, and my last question for the day: Why don't state governments reduce stamp duty and registration charges yeah. to bring down the cost for end consumers? This exactly. is a consumer query, and I agree with this. When GST came, yeah. one of the promises that uh, our uh, uh, vice president, who was then the minister, had said was that we can will. Can I take this? Yes. Can I take this? Yes. 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 Thank you. Now. real estate is the only sector which has got double taxation i don't think yes. any other sector has got gst uh, uh, real estate is the only sector gst as well as stamp duty yeah, in fact in most of the countries they subsumed the stamp duty into gst yes. that was the original draft if i if i uh, that if was I'm the plan correct. that was the plan it has yes. not been done so you see end consumer is paying again you see whatever i pay on the, on, on the land then either there should be stamp duty should also be there yeah. should be some input credit or something like that yes. or the, or the gst rate should be should not be there yeah. so this yeah. gst and stamp duty it's a double whammy it and is the, it is a double taxation sunil can you also comment on this yeah he is right <laughs> this is this is a milking cow for every state as uh, venki said third third most generating revenue for the state and they don't want to lose it and that that is the difference between the gst council also yes. and uh, venki uh, your comment <laughs> no i think they should scrap it even i think they should scrap it and uh, <laughs> yeah. i think i think But, i think that is it's high time that you the government took the yeah. call and said that we have to uh, on our part also do our, our bit to reduce the cost see we, we <laughs> just put so, the table last comment just put it on the table i tell you you see let the state charge the stamp duty because states have got very limited source of revenue the center has should should give that part from the gst to the state Some sir kind of sir i i actually defer sir then only we did that. a project no no we did a project for affordable housing where if the state actually makes the stamp duty zero they would still be better off because of the tax that the construction activity generates for the state so we actually yeah. showed using data that uh, they could easily Get rid of stamp duty, or uh, because they are anyway generating the construction act, which is where and they will get employment. And I employment, think we would love to publish that thing. report uh, on our site because uh, we would like to send it on to the government as well. On If our... I can get a copy of that, please. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, uh, Prabhakar, closing remarks from you. No, no, I, it's a great thing that uh, stamp duty, which is I believe regressive tax, and it should go. Yeah. and besides that that will not only help the buyers to come to the market at this this point of time at least till december but the state government should say that those who are going to buy it by till december the stamp duty will be half of the rate yeah. Yeah. something of that sort so this should give as a carrot so that buyers should come to the market who are on sitting on the fence at least like the government implies now the government implies they don't have any problem their job is secured their cash flow is secured so if they want to buy they should buy right now those yes. who jobs are secured they should buy of course those who jobs are not secured they will not buy one thing number two government should create a situation where the developer should not be forced to sell at a discounted price absolutely But government it's a it's a uh, market enterprise and yeah. you cannot dictate to the market that now you drop prices or else i mean exactly. it's like holding a gun to their heads and i don't take it wrong them. i and think i think there should be incentivization to drop prices there should be uh, innovative models of dropping prices but uh, forcing uh, an industry to drop prices when it's not uniform prices yeah, are not, not uniform. uniform so and it, it, it right. will not be healthy thing also for the market itself and that's where i'm going to close this uh, session it has been we have gone way over our time limit but i thought it was such a fantastic discussion thank you so much for joining me and we'll keep this conversation going somewhere we have to find the solutions and these debates will take us one step closer thank you thank you
Thank you, sir. Thank you, Jashree. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Jashree. Thank you.